Hey everybody, so tonight I'm having the final sessions with the ladies in my Heal Your Inner Child work group. And by popular demand, the ladies would like me to cover attachment styles and how to handle people of different attachment styles. So the question that I got is very timely. In case you're not familiar with it, attachment style was developed by psychiatrist John Balby, where he basically categorized how people relate to each other into a couple categories. So on the most basic level, you're either a securely attached person or an insecurely attached person. Roughly 60% of adults are securely attached, thank goodness. The other 40% are insecurely attached. By securely attached, we mean a person who is able to have a healthy relationship with other people. They're confident in who they are. They're able to feel their feelings. They're able to share their feelings, even if it's difficult with their partner. And they can have very effective com communications in relationships. The other 40% of insecurely attached people then are separated into two groups, roughly at half each. So roughly half of them are what we call avoidant. Avoidance are people that need a lot of space. So if they feel like the relationship is starting to get too close, then they would back off because they don't want to get too entangled with you. From the outside, they look very confident. They don't look like they don't need anybody. They look very independent. The other half are people that are anxiously attached. These are the kind of people that you would call very clingy, very needy. Like for example, oh my God, you know, I text him, I haven't heard back and it's been 10 minutes. You know, does he still care about me? What's going on? That is a pretty typical uh, anxiously attached response. So anyways, I'll, I'll read the, uh, the question for you. So the question goes like this. I'm anxiously attached and my boyfriend is an avoidant. We've been together for about a year or so. We get along great and we see each other almost every week. Recently, he told me that he's feeling overwhelmed. He just got a new job and he said that between taking their care of his boys, his work and me, he's hard, having a hard time making it all work and he feels like he needs to take a break from our relationship. I am devastated. He is the first guy I have fallen in love with in a very long time. But I also understand that avoidance need more space. Should I tell him, I understand how you feel, but please make up your mind so I'm not left wondering what is going on. I hope by saying this, it would not push him further away. The not knowing is killing me and I don't know what I'll do in the meantime. This is such a great question. <laughs> so first thing, take a deep breath, right? This is not the end of the world. I know it feels very scary, very painful. The not knowing the ambiguity is killing you. I can totally understand. So take a deep breath. So what I would recommend you do is tell him this. So calmly tell him this. That's why you need to take a deep breath. And if you need to take time, take the time. So say that, you know, hey, you know, I really enjoy spending time with you. I feel like we get along. It seems like you're not sure about the relationship and you need a break. And I respect that. I will give you the space that you need so you can sort things out. When you are ready, if you are, to reconnect, if, remember that if I am available, we can meet up. Then just, you know, give him a hug, kiss him on the forehead and say goodbye. The beauty of this is that not only are you giving him space, but you're giving him a chance to experience what it's like to live without you. He needs to feel that to actually understand what he had when he was with you. If he does reach out again and he's ready to commit, then you might have an opportunity to actually build something with this guy. If not, you can consider the universe doing you a huge favor. So there's a saying that I like to share with people, which is rejection is the universe's protection. A lot of times we chase people that are not good for us 
and then it actually turns out when you force something to happen and years later, you're like, oh my goodness, you know, I chased so hard in a relationship and I've been chasing all through our marriage as well. It doesn't feel good. So don't do that. Flow with life. Remember, rejection is the universe's protection. The other thing I hope that you read from this is that my advice is there is no asking of that guy. Like when you in your letter are saying, oh, I want to ask him, you know, can he make up his mind? What you're doing is you're giving your power away to the, this person. What if he still hems and hauls? What if he says, oh, you know, I, I like you too. I'm just not sure. I need, you know, some time. And then he keeps dragging this on you again are going to be left in limbo. So no, you don't give the decision power to him. You decide to move on based on the fact that he is not able to choose you at this point. You move on, you give him space. So you decided you don't put the decision power in him. The other thing you should do is in the meantime, put yourself back on the market. And I deliberately used a word, put yourself back on a market because dating is a lot like a real estate market. Until a buyer puts a deposit down and they actually have some money to lose, no matter what they say, they could say, oh my God, I love your house. I definitely, I definitely, definitely want to buy it. Please don't show your house to anybody else. Don't listen to that, right? Anybody that's been selling a house, like I have a, a really dear friend who's a top real estate agent here in the Silicon Valley. She's like, you may, I can't tell you how many buyers tell me this. They said, oh, you must take the, the house off right now. I'm not ready to give you a deposit now, but I, you know, I love your house so much. Don't listen to it. Until somebody puts a deposit down, you keep the house on the market. And in your case, you keep dating other people. So anyways, I hope you found that helpful. And uh, I'm, you know, to the ladies in the group tonight, I'm really excited because I think this attachment theory thing is so fundamental. And the most beautiful thing is that even if we were raised by parents that did not give us consistent love, and so we grew up to be insecurely attached, attachment, theory, attachment styles are stable, but fluid. That means even if we're insecurely attached, we definitely can work and become securely attached. So I look forward to seeing you all tonight and everybody else. I'll um, put a link down so that if you have a question, you can also send it to me. Thank you and have a great day.